<clears throat> well, hello, my lovelies, and a very warm welcome to Wednesday Night Live. And it is nothing less than a sheer orgasmic joy to be back with you again for another hour of wonderful community togetherness with what are, quite frankly, my favourite people in the world. And what a splendid way to start a live. Is there a better way to start a live stream than to welcome a brand new channel member? Yes, a brand new channel member, darlings. A, a new addition to the breed of fantastic people who very kindly, through their channel membership, support me and this excuse for <clears throat> for broadcasting chaos. <clears throat> uh, and of course, by becoming channel members, they are then able to avail themselves of, of a bewildering array of peaks and benefits and features and all sorts of wonderful things, including cake and free Momo and, uh, uh, oh God, I mean, the list is virtually endless. So Thomas, thank you very much indeed. Welcome to channel membership, you fantastic person, you. May the angels above shower down a never-ending rain of blessings upon your splendidly proportioned head. I wish nothing less than that for you. And I will go further. May you never run out of tomato ketchup, or indeed, your condiment of choice. Now then, who else have we got? Oh, and... Thank you to everybody who um, who participated. A lot of P's in that word, aren't there? Yeah. Thank you to everyone who participated in last night's live, which was nothing short of riotous, chaotic, and utterly hilarious. I loved it, and I hope you did too. Now, wine news, darlings. Very exciting wine news. I am back on the good stuff. Yes, darlings. It is on offer again. And for all of you who enjoy a drop of a rather splendid dry white, uh, Rioja Blanco. Uh, yeah, Rioja Blanco. And it's, let me just double check the year uh, for you. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, I can't see it. It's real stuff there. Look, it's got a, it's got a little sea line and everything. Where's the... Uh, Oh, I can't see the year. Uh, how annoying. Oh, well, it doesn't taste like a young wine anyway. Anyway, we're on the good stuff, darling. Back in the freezer with that. So, let me raise a glass to you, all you jolly fine top of the range community members. Cheers. Your very good health. I wish you good health the time to enjoy it, and lots and lots of happiness. Oh, yes. Bottoms up. Up yours. <laughs> oh, God, that is sublime. Utterly fantastic. Now then, who have we got with us tonight? Jimmy Quinn is here, and he says, good evening, Boaty and all. And a very good evening to you, Jimmy. How are you, my dear chap? Thank you, as always, for being an integral part of my inner scrotum. Uh, Lord Stiff Upper Lip is with us. Um, hello, bud. Hello to you. Steve Colg is here. Oh, God. Um, oh, blimey. Um, uh, right, bloody hellfire. That's Japanese, isn't it, Steve? Uh, I mean, I recognise Konnichiwa, but, you know... I can speak a, a bit of Chinese, darlings, but um, Japanese is kind of beyond me. I've got about four words, and that's my lot. So, quite frankly, I've got very little idea what Steer said there, but there we are. Mystic Hair is here, right in our midst, and, you know, that is a joy in and of itself. I'm sure you would agree. As one door closes, says Mystic Hair, referring, no doubt, to the good Captain Mustard, whose live stream precedes mine. My best friend in the whole world. And he does a jolly good live stream. And I couldn't wish or hope for a better warm-up act. So uh, 
Thank you, Mustard, for what was doubtless <clears throat> an excellent ice cream. As one door closes, another one opens. Good evening, Boaty, and a jolly good evening to you, Mystic. Trace is here, the Greenwood, having taken her mustard moderating hat off and probably the rest of her clothes as well. For those who don't know, you may be new to this live stream. You may have found it by accident. You may be wondering what the arsing hell is going on and why a minister of the church is about to get drunk and shout at you. But uh, yeah, if you are, if you do fall into that category, let me just make you fully aware that Trace... Um, the Greenwood is the name that you will see on the screen. I happen to know that her real name is Tracy because we are friends. And I happen to know that as soon as Mustard's live stream finished, she will have got her kit off and she will be watching this entirely stark as naked as the day that she was born. But uh, evening all, says Trace. Not sure how long my boaty sesh will last. I'm pretty knackered still from last night's one. Last night's was brilliant, wasn't it? Absolutely loved that. Ali Mac Mechanical is here. How fantastic. Hello to you, sir. Sir, sir, uh, sir, sir, sir. <sighs> Tricky chaps. Words. Third thumbs up. Thank you, Ali Mac. Uh, Andrew Butty Gig is here. I have a spotty butty, of course. Hi again, everyone. Skick is here, the fantastic Skick, who weighs in immediately saying, good subject on Mustard's Live about happiness and how to be happy. I've been through good and bad times. Uh, and, um, and for now, and for me now, being without lots of stress comes close. Yeah, well, you know, a stress-free life has got to be good, hasn't it? I don't mind, by the way, if a particularly interesting discussion has come up in Mustard's live and you want to carry it on in this one, I'm absolutely fine with that. And I will probably have an opinion to throw into the pot. I've got lots of opinions and they're all strong opinions and very firmly held. And, you know, probably wrong as well, but there we are. Uh, Emma Lemon is with us again, and that's fantastic. A warm welcome back. My goodness me. You are well and truly inveigling and making yourself comfortable in my inner scrotum. You are now a bog, one of both his old geezers and gals, and you are not once, not twice, but thrice welcome. And may I say that our community is just incredibly enhanced simply by having you forming part of it. <clears throat> Uh, what have you got to say for yourself? May I bid you a good evening? Uh, yes, you may. From my, oh dear, from my germ-infested dwelling. I have a suspicion it's the COVID germ variety. I'm feeling really shitey, to be honest. Oh, well, rot, what a rotten thing. Um, let's hope it's not too severe and let's hope it doesn't last too long and, uh, and you'll soon be feeling much better and well and truly on the mend. Uh, Ali Mack says, I bought a Mark V Astra. Uh, got it stripped down, head gasket and timing chain. I was after an 800 sterling, 2.7 Honda engine, but need a few needs a few quid spent on it, and I've got some bits left over. Oh, jolly good. Uh, oh, Peter P is with us. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. All of the best of the gang are here. Peter P is with us, says evening all. Uh, and... Um, Oh, right. Well, yes, you've mentioned this before. Skick has enjoyed some um, sexy time with some stunning ladies. Uh, he's had money and he's lived life. He's made a few bad choices, well, amongst which is watching this live stream. Uh, but hey ho, beggar it, I'm still here. I did have to paraphrase a bit there. But yeah, I mean, that's it, isn't it? That's it, isn't it? Um, whatever we've been through, and we've all been through our own trials and tribulations and suffered the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, but we are all still here. And if we're here, and if we have the great good fortune to wake up tomorrow morning, then we have an opportunity for happiness and joy. So let's not forget that and Let's remember that every day that we are blessed to enjoy here on what we call Earth is an opportunity for happiness and joy and is not to be ignored, I would contend. 
Did I put those sausages in the fridge? Yes, I think I did. They were on offer, darlings. Really nice sausages on a jolly good offer. So I bought them. Oh, I did. <clears throat> uh, I've had that Rona. Don't let it grind you down, says Ali Mac. Uh, I had COVID, says Emma Lemon, when it was rife. And it was awful. This feels very similar. Nobody to look after me, though. So having to fend for myself through a zombified haze. Oh, dear. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Emma, and I'm sorry that you've got nobody. I mean, look, where, where do you call home, Emma? Don't give me the exact address. We are broadcasting live on the internet. But give me a rough location, and I will ask the community if anybody is nearby who would be willing to bring you some chicken soup and sponge you down with a good bed bath. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to do that. And, uh, oh, hello, here's a new name. Uh, oh, my goodness me. Uh, I hope I pronounced this somewhere near correctly. Uh, Sam Riddy Sharma. Uh, I wonder how this live would go. We're all wondering how this live will go. Any of my live streams are like an unexploded grenade bouncing around inside a lift. You never know when it's going to go pop or in which direction. <clears throat> Ed Usher is here. Oh, the fantastic Ed. We love Ed. Hi, everyone. And Boaty. Hope you've had a jolly day. So I have had a jolly day. And it's kind of you to ask. And we all hope you've had a jolly day too, Ed. In fact, I hope you've all had a jolly day. Do feel free to tell me about how jolly your day was. What was the jolliest part of it? What was the least jolly part of it? And what did you have for lunch? And what have you had for dinner? Oh, and what are you drinking at the moment, if you are drinking anything at all? Uh, you found us, Sam, says Andrew. Uh, he did indeed. I, I assume it's a he. <clears throat> Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what kind of stream do they do? Well, now there's an interesting question. It depends who we're talking about, um, doesn't it, really? But, um, oh, and apparently my live stream is similar to Mustard's with lots of chat. Grab your coat, Greeny. You've pulled Trisha Alderman is with us. Oh, the wonderful Trisha. We love Trisha. Now, we established a few nights ago, and I'm unanimous in this, we established that Trisha was my absolute favourite Trisha in the world, full stop, end of story, no arguments. Uh, so I would be very interested, do any of you have a, a Trisha that is more favourable to you than our Trisha? And I would be very surprised if any of you do. Uh, but books is with us. Hi, uh, hi all. Uh, hope you're well. Fantastic. Um, oh, a message health review. And it's from Tracy. This is going to be filth. A bit of after 11 o'clock filth. I think, says Tracy, my Sunday bath has made me more attractive than usual. <clears throat> I'm beating them up with a shitty stick now. Trace, you are always the ultimate woman. You are attractive almost beyond words. Oh, my gosh. And uh, I would do anything to you, uh, for you. I, I, would really, I, 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 would do, uh, I would do anything for you. <laughs> oh, Neil is here as well. This is brilliant. Neil Gibbons, a.k.a. the Gibbonator, a.k.a. the very, 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 very nice man. And he is. He's a wonderful man, an absolutely splendid man. We, <laughs> we have held each other in a manly embrace. We have shared a hotel bed. <laughs> he was traumatized by the sight of my most private of parts. Oh, God, I love Neil. I like the dining table, say Sam. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm... Uh, I'm extremely fond of this dining table. 
Uh, one of the finest things that I've ever purchased. I love it very much indeed. Oh, that wine is going down nicely. <clears throat> John Studley is with us. The fantastic John. Hey, Boaty and hey, chat. Hello to you. Uh, that, that, yeah. oh, oh. The list of channel perks is endless, says Grace. Non-existent, more like. How dare you, madam? How dare you? How very dare you? The list of channel perks is endless. Cakes, momos, staying in my guest suite, um, use of mustard or mustard emoji. I can't remember all of them. I can't remember what I put down in a in a <laughs> an impassioned attempt to get you lot to part with 99p on a monthly basis. But I am a man of my word. And once anybody reminds me what I've promised, then I will carry through on that promise. Almost certainly. Probably. Oh, dear. Boat says Skick. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting one. At the age of 25, um, and your sex drive, I'd say, 80%, what percentage would you say is now? Well, let me correct you at the start. At the age of 25, Skip, my sex drive was 100%. Uh, now, that's an interesting question to answer. Now, throughout my 20s and my 30s, I will admit that I was a man driven by hormones. I was guided by my little tinkle. And I always was slightly ashamed of my little tinkle's actions. So... I always granted it a degree of um, autonomy. Um, it has its own name, Carruthers, the intrepid explorer. Um, and, yeah, I always granted it that degree of autonomy, or to be completely honest, I rather wish to disassociate myself from some of its actions. Um, but then as a very wise man once said to me, the standing cock has no conscience. And that's a very true thing. So if I were to answer, right, I mean, I'll give you a proper answer here, Skip. <clears throat> My sex drive now is still very much 100%, but not 100% of the time as it used to be. I've calmed down a bit in my old age. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's my honest answer to that. I'm, uh, in, in fact, it's like 105% now because um, I'm, a, I'm a bit older. I've got a bit more experience and uh, I can think of lots more things to, to get up to. So, yeah, I'd say it's about 105% now. Um, but... Not 100% of the time like it like it used to be. Um, you know, there was, there was no way that I could go a day without back in the day. Whereas now, you know, at the age of the grand old age of nearly dead, then, you know, I can cope with, I can cope with two or three times a week. Doesn't have to be a daily thing anymore. Which is a bloody good job, really. Um, <clears throat> Ed Usher says, pink or brown, Boaty? Well, what are we talking about there? Pink or brown what? Uh, if we're talking about Mr. Kipling's French fancies, uh, then pink. Um, if we're talking about snooker, then also pink because that's worth six and the brown is only worth four. If we're talking about anything else, then, um, well, I mean, you know, my mind is usually in the sewer. So if that's a sexual illusion, then I don't think it's any secret that um, I'm rather partial to taking a lap or two around the old chocolate speedway. And if the question wasn't about that, then I apologise for giving you too much information. No turps tonight, says uh, Ed. No, good stuff tonight, mate. This is beautiful. 
Um, skick. <laughs> says Andrew in reply to his question. As often as a Liverpudlian lady can fit him into a tight schedule. Oh, dear. <clears throat> Easy pink or a difficult brown, says Mr. Kerr. Yeah, I, I knew you were going down that route. <clears throat> Neil says, Ed, the stuff in your, he normally drinks, I'm sure painters use it to clear their uh, to clean their brushes. You're not far wrong, Neil, actually. Oh, Braveheart Tina is here. Haven't seen you for ages. Hey, Boaty, and hey, yourself. How have you been doing? Lovely to have you here. Oh, uh, dear. Boaty says, Jimmy Quinn, I got a good bottle of wine tonight. Um, Mulliner Granite Syrah 2017. That's a nice bit of age, isn't it? Seven years of aging, hopefully. In um, in an oaken cask. Well done, you, Jimmy. You are a man of taste and refinement, as I've uh, alluded to before. Now, oh, a nice drop of wine it makes all the difference, doesn't it? I mean, wine is just a wonderful thing. Even a bad one will make you feel better eventually. Maybe not when it's going down, but the after effects will. A good wine, and this is a good wine, darlings, is just a thing of absolute joy and splendor. So what have you lot been eating? We don't talk about food enough on these live streams. For lunch, I oh, I had noodles. I had noodles for lunch, uh, and they were damn good noodles, too. God, I enjoyed them. Oh, I did enjoy them. Uh, and for tomorrow's lunch, I've... Um, oh, tomorrow's lunch, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, could be sheet kebab. Could be sausage and mash with the nice sausages that I got. Oh, and... I need your help. I need your help for Monday. Don't forget that on Monday, wave your willy around the caravan. Don't forget that on Monday, I'm going to be recording episode two of whatever the hell it's called. Um, what's it called? Oh, Wales revisiting my homeland. That's right. Number one was going home, and I'm going to be recording episode two on Monday. And I think as part of the theme of the film is going to be replicating the one and only time that I've visited the place where I'm filming, uh, in order to properly recreate it, I think that I need to take a picnic. Um, so suggestions, please, for items to take on uh, a picnic that's going to be filmed. Now, you know that I've got... Um, I've got my nice picnic basket. So, oh, God, this hasn't seen the light of day since last year. Probably covered in cupboards, isn't it? But, yeah. Got my, got my picnic basket here. Look at that. Isn't that fabulous? And then in there, you've got um, an insulted... An insulting bit, you know, uh, you know, the old insulated foil. Oh, look, and you've got, oh, can you see? You've got wine glasses in there and the old insulated bit to keep you chilled and what's it? But yeah, I think, um, you know, when I'm going on Monday, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the beach, isn't it? And I think. <clears throat> We had a picnic on the original visit, so I think for the sake of completeness, uh, we, and I do say we because I'm not going alone, we should have a picnic on this one. So any suggestions? For a lovely romantic picnic on a beautiful beach. Ah, wonderful. Now then, where did I get to? Hey, 
Oh, that's where I got to, isn't it? Oh, Dino Dad is here, Russ. Good evening, sir, and everyone here. Hey, Russ, how are you, my lovely? Dad Smith is here. Evening, Booty. Good evening, chat. Hope you're all well. Uh, oh, and on the subject of um, Wales, revisiting my homeland. Episode one, done, dusted. The video's up there. Watch it. You might enjoy it. Uh, episode two being recorded on Monday. Episode three will hopefully, if I can scrape the money together, be recorded a fortnight on Monday, and it is planned. I know, I know where I'm going, and I know who I'm going with. So that's exciting, isn't it? And that's going to be a good one too. They're all going to be good ones. Uh, oh, this is nice. Everybody's having a having a bit of a chat together. Uh, I'm not sure they fancy a bed bath, says M L M N. Yeah, well, nobody fancies a bed bath, but you know, if you've got the Rona, if you've got the Lurgy, then you're going to be having hot sweats and cold sweats and all sorts of in between sweats and. You're going to need a bed bath, whether you like it or not. It's all part of the theatre of being ill. Oh, no. Which Carry On film? Oh, we never did the Gavin and uh, Stacey thing, did we? We never finished it off. So let's go on instead to Carry On films. Carry On films, quotes and moments. Now, which Carry On film was it? And this isn't a quiz. I genuinely can't remember. Frankie Howard was in a couple of Carry On films and talking about the bed bath and whatnot, I'm just remembering a moment from one of the Carry Ons um, where the orderly comes round, Frankie Howard's in the hospital bed and it's a washy time. I don't want washy time, says Frankie Howard. Which film was that? I mean, it's going to be, you know, you can narrow it down. Can't you? It's going to be Carry On Nurse, Carry On Matron or Carry On Doctor. Um, isn't it? But if you know which film that was from, let me know. Uh, and do let me know if you're anywhere near Roma Lemon and uh, willing to, you know, sponge her down with a moist flannel. <clears throat> oh, pronounced well, say Sam. Better than my mum. I'm called Sam by the community. Thank you, Sam. Then I... I, I uh, if I may, I shall also call you Sam. And a very warm welcome to uh, to the old Boatist World live stream community, incorporating Captain Mustard because he's my he's my best friend, and we sh <laughs> and um, our community is kind of shared in a in a Venn diagram. We would have overlapping uh, circles because um, uh, people that watch Mustard also watch me and vice versa. And, you know, some people even watch us together. So very warm welcome, Sam. I had four hard-boiled eggs for lunch, says Trace. Bloody hell, love, you're going to be egg-bound, aren't you? Uh, what are you doing? Are you trying to firm it up? Have you, have you been having issues? Is that why? Ben is here. Hello, Ben. Oh, God, it's always fun when Ben is here. Uh, in the Highlands, it rained most of the day, says Ali Mac. Uh, I'm now on homebrew, and I was working on an A-class. They are rubbish. I had an A-class, Ali Mac. I had an A-class, and I wondered why it was so cheap. And then I found out the starter motor was on its way out, and it's a two-and-a-half grand job to replace the bloody starter motor. You gotta drop the chassis or something ridiculous. So that was the car that I kept for about oh however long it was, eight or nine months with no starter motor. I had to park it on a hill or I had to push start it. And that is the car in which I famously ran myself over. So I pushed it, got it up to speed, jumped in to try and jump start it, tripped and literally ran myself over with a Mercedes. Oh, Sherry is here, the lovely Sherry K. Ah, oh, fabulous. Well, here on time, not in the best state. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But I left a live stream in Key West to pop over. And it's amazing and crazy that after having lived in um, 
Southern Florida, a large part of my life, I've never been to the Keys. That, that is amazing, Shadi. And uh, welcome to you, my lovely. It's it's never less than a sheer joy to have you here. You had a spot of transatlantic, oh, windswept, interesting, charismatic joy to our doings here. That's what you do, and many others. I had a kebab for dinner, says Emma, that I had to drag myself down the street to purchase for myself. Emma, this is awful. Do you not have any staff? Or a husband or, you know, partner of equal repute to come and get you a kebab? I'm not sure the kebab is the best thing. Well, actually, I am sure that the kebab is the best thing. Oh, I've got some kebab news, in fact. Um, I went. Now, darlings, you know that I'm a terrible snob, but I forced myself to go into home bargains today. Yeah, I know. Obviously, I put a pillowcase over my head so nobody would recognise me. And the reason I went to home bargains was because I needed to buy some windscreen wipers for... Windsor Davis, the car known as Windsor Davis. And you know why I had to buy them, because I almost died coming home on Monday night. And I looked at Halfords and a pair of windscreen wipers was 20 quid. And I knew that in home bargains, I could buy two windscreen wipers for £3.98, £1.99 each. And in my experience, they're perfectly acceptably good. So I had to go into home bargains, didn't I? And because I was in there, I had a bit of a browse around. Somebody has just done a nice thing. Who's done that? Pocahontas 100 has become a channel member. Our second brand new and shiny and generally wonderful channel member of the evening. Keen to get their hands on all of the, all of the benefits and perks that channel membership brings. Uh, thank you very much, Pocahontas 100. Your support is enormously appreciated, and I will wear it at all times so I don't do myself a mischief. Um, and enjoy your channel membership. Um, it's genuinely worthwhile now because uh, a lot more videos are becoming channel members only for all of the reasons that I explained before. And I don't need to do that again, do I? No. What was I telling you about? Oh, I was telling you about home bargains. So I had a bit of a browse round, and I, I bought some bits, didn't I? I bought five pairs of black socks, because I don't have any black socks. Well, I've got one pair of, like, four-year-old work socks, and my toenail went through them today. So check these out. Nice. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And haven't I got a nicely shaped ankle? Would you not agree? So I've got five pairs of those. Good job I'm flexible. I can get my leg over in it. There you go, Skip. There's another answer to your question. I can still get my leg over 100% of the time. Oh, and if you want to see the other leg for comparison, you can do. I'm not shy. There you go. There's the old... Uh, there's the other one. Look at that. What a fabulous sock. Nice material. And um, these are some sort of breathable fabric, so they're supposed not to stink too badly. And I desperately did need socks. Uh, and so I purchased these. And uh, I can tell you, frankly and honestly, that five pairs of those socks were the princely sum of three pounds and 99 of the king's pence. What else did I buy? Oh, I bought. <laughs> Again, it was for next to nothing. Which of you, who of you have got some of this in your kitchen cupboard? I've never owned this. I've lived in the north for a while now, and I've never had this, but I've got it now. Henderson's Relish, known locally as Hendo's. Now I feel properly at home in the north. Um, what else did I buy? Well, 
I bought quite a lot of stuff. I mean, I spent over over six pounds, which is um, a massive shopping spree for me. Uh, let me think, what else did I buy? Oh, yeah, the important one. Now, don't judge me. <clears throat> don't judge me. Yes, I am a foodie. Yes, before I was taken poor, I was no stranger to a three Michelin star restaurant. And yes, I work in fine dining. I run a fine dining restaurant. And yet, I bought this. And I'm not even sorry. Check it out. <laughs> oh. Oh dear. You see, we're doing the um, recording the Welsh things on a Monday. I'm not always at the yard. And that means I, I can't get my kebab fixed because, um, you know, we're not going to Istanbul. Can't go to Istanbul when I'm in Wales. <clears throat> and I can't get a kebab here. For those of you who don't know, I live in the Peak District National Park. It is... It's an hour's round trip to my local shop to buy something like milk, which is a very small shop and post office type thing. The chance of getting a kebab, nil. Nobody delivers here. You can't get Deliveroo or Uber Eats or anything like that. Nothing like that at all. So, um, yeah, if you want a kebab, it's a DIY job. Now, I have made my own kebab meat in the past. Uh, quite successfully and it's um it's not that difficult to do uh and it's really quite nice but i've got so much on now to be honest um you know taking on all the extra responsibility at the restaurant um <clears throat> oh god i can only apologize oh dear it was bound to come out at some point wasn't it the old wine burp well let's let's embrace it let's welcome it as it makes its way into the ether. Um, yeah, so a kebab is going to be a DIY job. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be awful, but awful in a kind of wonderful way. So there you go. That's another option for lunch tomorrow, isn't it? A dirty, filthy kebab. Wonderful. So, yeah, that was my trip to Home Bargains covered. I don't think I bought anything else, did I? Um, no, I didn't because I didn't have any more money. There we are. <clears throat> uh, ben says, Aloha, Mr. Boatyard and the Fruity Gang. <laughs> hello, Ben. I've already said hello to you, mate. The best thing I saw during COVID, says Black Lines, was a picture of a funeral parlour with a thank you NHS sign in the window. Passive aggressive. Oh, dear God. Oh, COVID. What a mad time it was, wasn't it? What a mad time it was. I rather enjoyed it. Uh, go on. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> go on, Boaty. Greenwood, lock your doors. He'll be round after the live. <laughs> uh, I live in awe of my big sister, says Emma Lemon. Uh, and her big sister is Tracy, the Greenwood. Uh, beauty, personality, an all round general brilliance. Well, I would concur with that, absolutely. And uh, Tracy replies, thank you, creep, what you're after. Neil says, if you do stop over at Boaties, remember to take a bolt lock to the inside of the door. God only knows what he'll be doing to you in the middle of the night. Oh, you wrong me, Neil, you wrong me. Just because I've <laughs> enticed you into bed in the Premier Inn in Milnrow. 
And you didn't put up much of a struggle either, I have to say. Sherry says it's 6 16 uh, uh, oh, p.m. here. Uh, and p.m., if you weren't aware, stands for post meridian. Who can tell me without Googling, and I'll know if you've cheated, who can tell me what a.m. stands for? And uh, <clears throat> a boaty point to the first person to get it right. Uh, it's 6.16 p.m. here, and I'm 56 comments behind what you're reading now. I want to see how long it takes for you to get down to me. Sherry, I'm always behind on the comments. I'm always behind on the comments. I'm, I'm always all behind like a cow's tail. That's what I am. All behind like a cow. When's the next Clarkson's Farm going to come out? It seems like more than a year since the last Clarkson's Farm. I love Clarkson's Farm. I really enjoy it. I'm so looking forward to the next one. And I'd love to have a go on his missus. What? Oh, dear me. I should coke her. She's a lovely, big, tall Irish thing. That's wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> Is he talking about the Liverpudlian woman again? Was it standing to attention with a little flashlight ready to go exploring? You should call it Indiana Jones. Uh, I did ping you a message, Jody, uh, Boaty mate, says John. I will have a peek. <clears throat> I will have a peek. Oh, John, uh, that's going to be impossible, mate. The, the thing is, to get to yours and back, and then to yours and back again. That's eight hours. Um, and my Mondays are tied up. So there's no way I could do I mean, that's eight hours without doing anything while we're here. Um, so, you know, there's no way I could do it with work, unfortunately. <clears throat> Have a word with Neil and Joe. Um, there may be things coming, coming up, maybe, and tie in with something or... Um, <clears throat> You know, when they're up in this direction, we could meet up and have a Sunday lunch or something. But I, on it, I, I would if I could, as you know, I did, I did it before and on that Monday. But Mondays are just, you know, out the window now with the whales thing and the and the yard stuff. And I can't do it on any other day. It's just, it, it, it's genuinely eight hours. It's two hours down to you, or you know, maybe an hour and a half if you're lucky. But and then two hours back, and then two hours down, and two hours back. I, I just couldn't do it. <clears throat> uh, Boaty's sex, <laughs> Boat sex drive is 105%, but his clutch is slipping, says Bad Books. He's driving around with his widget on the clutch pedal. Oh, God, here we go. Here we go. He did say he was driven by it. I bet that was an awkward driving test. <laughs> God, I slipped and fell while changing gear. I was naked, yes. <laughs> Back lines. Uh, Skick says, would you say women enjoy sex as much as men? Uh, yeah, well, absolutely, Skick, when it's done right. Um, probably more than men, if, if anything. I mean, you know, it all depends on the individual circumstance and the individual operator, isn't it? Doesn't it? But, yeah, absolutely women, women can, should, and do enjoy sex every bit as much as men, if not more. Bloody hell, Skip. <clears throat> of all the people to ask that, you ask me. <clears throat> me, who very recently spent a year living with a Chinese woman who enjoyed it so much <clears throat> that she literally took advantage of me when I was still asleep on a daily basis. God. So, yes, I definitely would. Oh, dear. I'm not allowed to show that one, Bad Books. YouTube won't let me. Thank God it wasn't on top gear. Burn some dust and eat my rubber. Uh, 
It was, it was bad books. That's the thing. Oh, right. For lunch, says Ali Mac Mechanical, I had egg sandwiches. <laughs> the quilt cover will be floating later. Oh, dear. Uh, and Ali says, yeah, yeah, maybe it will be with the amount of homebrew consumed and eggs. They're one of my favorite foods. That's a very nice picnic basket, says Emma. Thank you. I appreciate that. Drop me off some lunch. And there's plenty of room for the pottering harness and lube, says Andrew. I love that picnic basket. Um, that replaced my original picnic basket because this was a posher one. And I gave my original picnic basket with all of the accoutrement and the matching picnic blanket and everything. I gave it to my dear friend, Captain Mustard. And uh, it lives in Toby Charles. So hopefully my old picnic basket lives on to give joy. But yeah, I love this one. That's um, I really wanted one of those little cute light ones with, and I wanted it with the built-in insulated compartment for the uh, for the chill. I've got no idea why I'm doing this, and I wish I could stop. Stop. Thank you. Yeah. So, but yeah, what am I going to take for lunch on Monday? That is the question. Should I do a cold picnic? Should I take my, um, should I put something in my food flask and take that? Or should I take something in the uh, the warmy, warmy thing that Neil and Sophie very kindly gave me for my birthday and have a, so it's not going to be that warm, is it, on Monday? I haven't looked at the weather forecast yet. Oh, I hope it's not raining. But it should definitely be taken food because oh, there's nowhere to eat there anyway. I mean, there are places where you can eat. I mean, there are two places where you can eat anyway, but you wouldn't want to. Better to take something, really. <clears throat> oh, now we're coming in with the suggestions. Um, Neil, it doesn't come with a blanket, pottering lube and a five-pack of French lettuce. A four-person pork pie, says Mr. Care. With HP sauce, says Peter P. Pork pie, Coleman's and HP sauce, says Dino Dad. I miss Opwap, says Trace. We haven't done Opwap for ages, have we? Right, I'm going to give you an Opwap. Um, yeah, I will give you an Opwap, but it won't mean anything to you. There's somebody that I'm friends with. She's a lovely American lady. Uh, she's a cyclist. That's how I know her. And um, she puts out these amazing photographs on Facebook and Instagram and all of that sort of thing. And I looked at these photographs and I thought, oh, what? Oh, oh, lovely. And then suddenly she dropped the bombshell. That she's 62 years old. So I nominate Gina McCurdy as my OPWAP for tonight. And if you're wondering what OPWAP, OPWAP is, old age pensioners worth a pottering. Who do you know who is of a pensionable age, but you would still administer a pottering to them or allow them to administer a pottering to you? That's what OPWAP is all about. And that is my nomination for tonight. Um, is that, oh, what's her name? What's her name? The one who befuddled, used to go out with Hugh Grant. And she made Billy Connolly go all weird when she came on without a bra. Oh, Liz Hurley. Liz Hurley. She looks good. She's got to be knocking on the Oak Wap age, hasn't she? But if you've got an Oak Wap that you would like to nominate, do please feel free. Pork pie with mustard, says Ali Mac. Yum, yum. I don't like pork pie. I'll tell you what I'd love to take. And I can't find it anywhere anymore. Um, way, way, way back in the day when I was in my late teens, there was a thing. It's still a thing. Um, Drucker's Vienna Patisserie, right? And they used to do a sausage and onion lattice pie. So kind of like a semi-convertible open top pork pie but it was sausage and onion 
And it was amazing. And then uh, I'm sure at some point Morrison's used to sell a sausage and onion lattice pie. And then it just seems you couldn't get one anywhere. And I told this to Boo when she and I were, uh, and Little Miss were, uh, our dream came true and we started a new life together in Matlock Bath in a beautiful historic cottage. And I told her about this and bless her, she made me a sausage and onion lattice pie. Um, but I would love, in fact, I would love to do this on Monday. Right, community challenge for Monday. Right, and I'm serious about this, darlings. I'm really 100% serious about this. Between us, as a community, can we source, find uh, a sausage and onion lattice pie for me to take to a Welsh beach for a picnic on Monday? Does anybody know anywhere that sells them or could get delivered next day on Amazon Prime? And I'm willing to drive to collect it. Well, I'd have to. I mean, you know, I live in the arse end of nowhere there. So I, I would have to drive. But seriously, it would be amazing to have a sausage and onion lattice pie for Monday. Get on the case, guys. See if you can track anything down. Gosh, 40 of you watching at the moment. That's absolutely splendid. And 22 of you have been kind enough to tickle that like button gently but oh so firmly. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate you. Oh, yes, I do. In fact, if I do locate a sausage and onion lattice pie, I'll save a slice for you with some Branston pickle. Or would you prefer pickled willy? Pick a lily. I'll give you a choice. Boaty says, Jimmy Quinn, you can't beat a good red wine and a Monte Cristo number two, but I don't smoke anymore. Doctor's orders. Very wise. Neil says, crusty cob with ham and egg and mustard uh, on with a large pork pie. The pork pies are constant, isn't it? I don't like pork pies. Carry on matron, asks Ross. It could have been. I don't want washy time. Uh, we had pies, a raffle prize from a local pub. Stilton and spinach and chicken and ham. Very pleasant indeed, says Bad Books. Uh, it has been a while, says Braveheart Tina. Not been well, but hopefully getting back to normal. Oh, well, best wishes. Uh, best wishes for a very rapid and complete recovery. Uh, and you? Oh, I'm grand. I'm grand. I'm too poor to, to, to be ill. I just crack on. Carry on matron, asks Andrew. Could have been. I don't know. A humongous scotch egg, says Mystic Hair. Uh, <laughs> I would never recommend an A-class to anyone, says Ali Macri. Oh, well, neither would I, no. Uh, Neil says, I've had an email from work to say we have two patrols off in my area because they've had accidents. One has had a member shut their hand in a door and the other's been bitten by a dog. Oh, dear me. Sherry Kay has been craving wine for months now, but it hasn't been accessible to me. At least uh, to her, at least from Walmart, because you must show ID when they deliver it. And I've been without current ID for years. Need to go in person. Oh, what a rotten thing, Sherry Kay. How do you survive without wine for months? Uh, Emma Lemon says, no staff, no partner, no anybody apart from Tracy, who lives bloody miles away. And if she did bring food down, it would just be eggs anyway. Oh, Emma. Well, right, come on, darlings. Right, we've got a valued member of our inner scrotum here who's got no staff, uh, no partner, and no anybody. And she's in need of some loving care and attention and some chicken soup or, well, a kebab, quite frankly. Uh, a kebab and a sponge bath. There must be somebody local. Uh. eBay do Bosch wiper blades for 13 quid, says Neil. 
Come on, Harry, they're brilliant. Yeah, well, mine were 199, so I win. Uh, Jimmy Quinn is welcoming Pocahontas 100 channel membership, which is very kind. Do I want to know what the chocolate speedway is, uh, Sherry Kay? Almost certainly not, my lovely. Almost certainly not. <clears throat> uh, and Andrew agrees, no, Sherry, no. And Neil agrees, no. <laughs> you read 36 comments in 17 minutes. Very good, say Sherry. Well, thank you very much. Mr. I can't read that bad books. A matching pair of socks and a matching pair of legs. You don't get nothing for a pair. Not in this game. Marvellous. Lemons rule. Hendo's is lovely, says Ali Mac. Henderson's relish he's talking about there. I see, says Sherry Kay. Then it must be what I was thinking he meant. Oh, my. Thank Christ he didn't take that sock off slowly, says Dino Dad. Wine, freezer, now, says Andrew Buttigieg. Thank you, Andrew. I will check it. Oh, save just in time. Save just in time. I'll leave that one out. Otherwise, there's an embryonic wine turd there. I can see it. Oh, God, says Neil. That stuff is absolute filth. <laughs> Beef curtains in a bag, says Andrew. What will they think of next? And goes on to say, yes, Sherry. It was what you were thinking. With me, it pretty much always is what you were thinking. Uh, noodles in a pot. Has anybody thought of that, says Russ? Uh, good that no one's eating at the, at the other end of the table, says Sherry. Take out the disinfectant before I fly over for dinner that you will be cooking. Sherry, you would be very, very welcome. It would be an honour and a pleasure to cook for you. And I would even let you sit at the head of the fully disinfected dining table. I would give you, what would I give you? Oh, don't go there. Uh, oh, well, I mean, what do you fancy? Do you want Nepali? If you want Nepali, I'll give you Momo starter. Uh, and then um, rural Himalayan village chicken curry with rice and roti. Or if you wanted Italian, I would give you bruschetta, followed by uh, Palo alla Vesuvio. If you wanted, um, oh God, if you wanted British, oh God, what would I give you if you wanted British? I might just give you roast beef, roast beef and Yorkshire puddings, lovely, fragrant, rare roast beef. Uh, if you wanted, oh, this could go on forever. Uh, oh, hello, Captain Mustard popped in. Jolly good. I know how to make kebabs, says Braveheart Tina. I used to work in a chippy, uh, not far from my home. Lovely to see you all, says Captain Mustard, ingratiating himself with, <laughs> ingratiating himself with the audience, preparatory to his live stream tomorrow night. I'm gutted that I miss out on Mustard's Live, but I'm at the restaurant. What can I do? Booty, says Jimmy Quinn. Today I got truffle mayonnaise and chilli and piquillo pepper chutney. Really nice. Well, sounds it. Correct, Dino Dad, Auntie. Although you spelt it wrong, so not correct. Uh, Andrew Buttigieg also says anti, but he spelt it correctly, so you win. A-M stands for anti-meridian. It's the Latin anti, meaning before. Uh, anti-meridian, before meridian, before midday. P-M, post-meridian, Latin, after midday. So there you go. I wonder if I can get pork pie in the States, says Sherry. I'll look it up on Google. Oh, and Neil also got it, spelt correctly, anti-meridian. Uh, Jimmy Quinn's just gone for the English before noon. I'm not sure he would let you, Boaty, says Ali Mac. 
Clarkson, that is, in terms of having a go on his missus. Oh, well, that's miserable, isn't it? Uh, oh, Joe is here, Cars with JC. Evening all, just got back from work. Hope you had a good shift, Joe. Hope you didn't have that awkward customer who booked in the 10 to 11 slot and you were all finished by 9 o'clock. So you rang them up and said, uh, Hello, just a courtesy call from Joe, your Tesco delivery driver. I know you're booked in the 10 to 11 slot, but I can do you a little bit earlier if that would be convenient. And you're hoping that they say yes, so that you can go home and bugger off. And they say, no, sorry, I'm at the pub. I won't be home until I'll, till 10 o'clock. Oh, they were the worst. Well, actually, I didn't mind. I was always happy to work until 11 o'clock. All of the other drivers, they wanted to get them all done early. <clears throat> and the customers knew it. They'd book a 10 to 11 slot for a pound rather than paying like five pounds for a seven to eight slot, knowing that the driver would ring them up and say, can I bring it early? For those who don't know, if you're, um, if you're a grocery delivery driver, unless things have changed, you're not allowed to deliver early unless you've had express permission from the customer. And sometimes, uh, sometimes you have a run that's really quiet and you want to do them early so you can finish early. Or sometimes you've got a really busy period, so you want to do them early so that you're not going to um, get any late deliveries in the in the busy slot. And uh, anyway, there you are. Uh, hope you had a good one, Joe, and welcome. I'm embarrassed to admit, say Sherry, I never knew what PM stood for. Thank you for the education. You're more than welcome. I've already said to John, says Joe, that it needs planning in advance as a lot of driving and money needed. Uh, yeah, correct. <clears throat> I suggested a barbecue in the yard in like July or something. Yeah, that would work. That would work. In all seriousness, John, it's a, <clears throat> it is a, a hell of a thing. I mean... If you were just coming up here and going back, that's not so bad. But for me to come down and back and down and back, it's it's most of the day gone just to that. I reckon that's a good shout, Joe, says Neil. Uh, a community barbecue in the yard. Exactly, mate, says Joe. That would be fun, wouldn't it? That would really be fun. <clears throat> a community barbecue and I, I could bring a stove and do Momo as well. I love that old picnic basket, says Trace. The Scottish bondage dog. Yeah, you remember it. That was the one. Mustard's got that now. It's in the 420 uh, GSI. Oh, dear. Yes, remember the gimp dog. Genuinely, says Trace, the picnic basket looking like a dog wearing tartan and bondage. <laughs> Liz Hurley, yes, indeed, says Mustard. I can't believe you all remember my old picnic basket and that. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, Liz Hurley is my missus's second cousin, says, uh, says Russ. Blimey. Only Boaty can find something like that. Bad Book says 63 is no longer an OAP by order of a state pension age. Oh, look, over 60, they count for OPWAP. In fact, nearly 60 the count for OPWAP. To be honest, says Gick, I find having private moments embarrassing now uh, at 30 plus. Had to be half cut. <laughs> I've got to be half cut first to start. I'm just being honest. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Sherry says, I've never had a picnic basket. I don't like sitting on the grass ever. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't like sitting on the grass, even on a blanket, but at a table, okay. Um, yeah, well, that's how I do it, Sherry. I've got, um, of course, you won't have seen the old videos, will you? But I've got portable outside dining equipment. I've got fold-up tables and chairs and whatnot. So, um, so that when we do a Land Rover lunch or a dining outside, we do it in style, don't we, darlings? Oh, Vicky Michelle says, Andrew, good shout. 
Mark Passad. Hello, Mark. Just bought some Tewksbury mustard on your recommendation, and I'm well pleased. I'm genuinely delighted to hear that. And I will tell you again, I won't stop banging on about it. If you like mustard, this is the ultimate mustard. Tewksbury mustard. Try it. I promise you, you will not regret it. As Mark Prasad has just found out. How are you, Mark? Lovely to have you here, mate. <clears throat> Liz Hurley's 58 says bad books. Yeah, well, 58 in my book is Oprah. That counts. Greg says Mystic Hair. I don't know what Greg's is all about. I've never indulged. I just want some manifold meat again, says Mustard. Yeah, well, you go for it. Monday is going to be all about taking our own. Morrison's Butte sell them, says Joe. No joke. Honestly? Oh, Steve Ness Paul is with us. Another friend from the old United States of Confusion over the Heading Pond. Hello, all you sausage enthusiasts. Sorry I'm late. No, I'm not. <laughs> Neil says, I think it's every one of them, Joe. They do them by me. They don't do them in mine. They do Bramley apple pork pies and chilli pork pies in Bridge North. They're amazing. There are loads of pork pies, but I cannot get sausage and onion pie anywhere. And if you know where to sell sausage and onion pie, tell me. Because I want one or some for Monday. God, it's seven minutes past midnight. We're supposed to have finished. There's a really excellent pie shop in Melton Mowbray, says Emma Lemon. Has to be cold for the congealed fat, says Ross. I agree with that. Sherry says, every time you say Madison, you bring back memories to me here. That was the name of a cafeteria here in Florida uh, and maybe in the whole south. I don't know. They had servers and it was very nice. Um, it's okay, Boaty, mate, says John. I know you would have. Don't worry about it. I was just thinking of a nice day with you. I'm, we'll make it happen, John. But it just can't happen like that. We'll have to tie it in with something else. But we will make it happen. Um, I'm still planning on having the Sunday lunch meetups either here in my home or in the village hall or in the local pub. We, we need to do some of those this year. And maybe somebody would be kind enough to give you a lift. I drove over one of your frightening bridges today, says Bad Books. Humber Bridge really put the willies up me. Properly put the willies up me. No no joking. Wouldn't have bothered me in the least when I was a kid. You know, I, I remember cycling over the original Seven Bridge. Nothing bothered me when I was a kid. We're all immortal. But the Humber Bridge, with its low sides and whatnot, Oh, it put the proper willies up me. I had a hell of a job driving over there. Bad book says, Sherry, Boaty's kitchen table has some form. <laughs> uh, Sherry says, you people are making me cuckoo. Apple something, chili something, pork pie sounds great. Going back a long time back in Brooklyn, New York, my hometown, there was a store called... Um, God almighty, my eyesight. Something in 20, but I never got in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Neil says, when we go camping by his farm, we'll have to chain him up so he doesn't go trying to find it. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, we are going on a camping trip, darlings. We're going on a community camping trip to somewhere near Clarkson's farm. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. Oh, I need to get a tent. I do need to get a tent. I need to, well, I need to get some money first and then I need to start looking on Facebook Marketplace. I'm kind of, I'm dreading it, but I'm looking forward to it at the same time. It's going to be such a laugh. I had three drops, says Joe, three dead ass. 
spent most of the shift parked up in laybys. Oh, they're the best bits. I'll take the curry chicken and a very good wine, says Sherry. Deal. You're on. <clears throat> God, I've actually caught up with the comments. Truffle mayonnaise, says Sherry. I love mayonnaise. I've never heard of that, and I've never had truffle any uh, anything. Always wanted to, but chocolate truffles, yes, please. The Humber was the longest single span bridge of its time, says Russ, and it, it was. I knew that. I put that in my video of it. Boat is Bridges, what a fantastic series. Oh, it's getting planned for July. Excellent. Camping, uh, oh, the camping that is, in Clarkson's Farm, says Neil. You'll be fine once you drink a bit. I will. Title, you're going to have a bed bath whether you like it or not. <laughs> Skick says, is that a good car, the T-Reg in Mustard's Yard? Um, which one is that, Skick? Which T-Reg in Mustard's Yard? Uh, if you mean the Rover 623, that's not in Mustard's Yard anymore. That's right there, just the other side of this wall. And it's fucking amazing. Amazing. I took it to work again tonight. I can't get enough of it. I just can't get enough of it. <clears throat> As a graduate of the University of Hull, says Matt Sad, I've travelled over the Humber Bridge on many occasions. It is an engineering triumph. Agreed. Joe says I'm looking forward to the camping trip. And Emma says what happens on the camping trip stays on the camping trip. And you can be damn sure it will. Darlings, it is time to go. Thank you. So I, it's been non-stop. It's been non-stop tonight. But it is time to bring it to a halt. For tonight. You good people have got sleep to have. And um, I'm driving the 600 about still, says Neil. I'm in love with that car. That and, oh, and the ZTT needs the, the bearing. I honestly, the I just can't get enough of the uh, of the six two three. It's um, it's a stunning car, absolutely stunning car. But yeah, I need to get some curry on the go for supper. I think it's curry tonight, isn't it? Oh, I didn't get a roti, did I? I think I've got a bit. Oh, I think I've got one in the freezer. Uh, so, time for the good night. Trey says, good night all. See you tomorrow. Yes, indeed, tomorrow. Double live day again tomorrow. Captain Mustard will be doing his live at, uh, I think, 8.40 is the normal time. And I will be, what, what day is it tomorrow? Oh, today. What day is it today? Thursday. Uh, and I will be live again at 11 o'clock for Thursday Night Live. So plenty of live action. <clears throat> uh, good night, chat, and good night, Boater, mate. Good night, John. Always, always in my thoughts, mate, and everybody else's. Peter P says, night, night. Captain Mustard says, good night, everyone. Night, Mustard. Emma Lemon says, I'm, I'm taking my lurker to bed. Oh, bless you, darling. I hope you're not too bad. I hope you're not too bad. And you take care of yourself, seeing as you've got nobody else to do it for you until we find somebody to come around and give you a bed bath and bring you a kebab. You need to get to the studio and start your Strike It Lucky show, says Russ. I'd do that. I would love to do that. Skick says, Mustard promised to do a night in the caravan. What happened? Good question. You should grill him about that, Skick. Good night, Boaty, and good night all here, says Mike Passad. Gutted I miss most of the live, says Joe. Hope you all had a fab evening. That's the life of the working man, isn't it, mate? You can always watch it on Catch Up, and uh, there'll be, you know, there'll be plenty of others where you hear in person. Braveheart Tina says, oh, right, jolly good. Good night, all you sausage lovers, says Stephen S. Paul. 
Trisha says, good night, Jason and Chad. Good night from Ali Mack. I'm sure it was Cuddy last night, says Emma. It's Cuddy every night, darling. It's, um, to be honest, the Nepali curry is so incredibly healthy that you can eat it every day. And it's so unbelievably, fantastically tasty that you want to eat it every day. So I pretty much do. Excellent live, Boaty, says Jimmy Quinn. Good night, Boaty and all. Thank you, Jimmy. Braveheart Tina says, good night, all in the chat. And uh, Jim. Uh, Joe says, Jason, can you do more content on the 623, please? Like a walk around, etc. Haven't seen it in ages. Um, yeah, I can do that, Joe. In fact, there's um, there'll be a video coming out tomorrow featuring it. So there you go. Ask and you shall receive. Is that 623 bus says I'm now to Rover 623 GSI? Uh, it'll be good to see it cleaned up, says Neil. It's such a pretty car. It is. It is. Um, oh, God. Ross is off to watch Joseph Montego review. Honestly, the I'm uh, I'm so besotted with the uh, with Windsor Davis. It's a much better car than I I realised. I'm probably probably going to offer it for sale for a short period so I can say that I have. And if somebody wants to buy it, they can. If not, I'm going to find a way to keep it. It's just too, it's too good, and it's too me. I can't stop myself driving it. I had to go down into town to the solicitors today. I went in the 623. I had to go to work tonight. I went in the 623. And I'm going to have to force myself not to go in it tomorrow. It's just too joyful. You're welcome, Joe. Right, that is it, darlings. That is absolutely it. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, please have a safe and peaceful night. Uh, and those of you who are a little bit poorly, especially, or even a lot poorly, you above all, take great care of yourselves. And uh, please, please, please get, um, get yourself better soon. So, yeah, have a safe and peaceful night. Have the best possible day that you can tomorrow. And remember, each new day is an opportunity to seize it with both hands and for it to bring both um, happiness and joy. Um, and, yeah, much love from me. And please join me again tomorrow night, 11 o'clock. Same time, same place, Thursday Night Live. Loads of love. Take great care and sleep tight for you and indeed bosh <laughs>